Ghana is struggling to feed itself. Rising temperatures and increasingly unpredictable rains are compounding the long-running problems of an increasing population and declining soil fertility. In the area around Jirapa and Laura, maize and cowpea yields have slumped. We are seeing maize still standing unharvested. It has failed. If you are to remove the caps, you see that I will have to dispose of all this maize. Granok, one of the most economically important crops in the area, has seen very poor harvest. Now, even drought-tolerant crops like millet and sorghum are failing. We used to get huge harvests of maize, millet and granite, but now we don't get anything. Our soil is poor and the rains are also low. The temperature is never coming down. As a matter of fact, it's been going up. That's why our crops don't do well anymore. As staple crops fail, more and more farmers are turning to livestock production. But while sheep and goats are able to feed on the low quality grasslands, Farmers still need to produce crops to feed themselves and their families, as well as to maintain their traditional diets and identities. The situation has triggered a rush to the banks of local rivers in search of land to grow vegetables. The Black Volta River, which marks the boundary between Northwest Ghana and Burkina Faso, is one area facing increasing pressure. For those farmers, fortunate to have land near the rivers, yields are good. But the situation is causing increasing tensions, resulting in competing claims for the land. Increasingly common is the migration of farmers from their homelands in the Upper West region to Ghana's cooler, wetter northern region, about 120 kilometers south. My husband left three months ago. Initially, I was very sad, but there was so much hardship here. We needed money to buy food and to send our children to school. Near the town of Kekiasi, average temperatures are two degrees cooler and the land is much more fertile. A whole community of migrants has sprung up. I am a settler here. All the people gathered here are settlers. I moved from the Laura area in 1979 because we couldn't grow enough food to feed ourselves or our families. I grow maize, sorghum and millet. The yields are much better. The rains start earlier here and they last longer. At the local market in the town of Sola, maize, yams, granules, millet and sorghum are all in good supply. For now, the area has enough spare productive land to absorb the continuing flow of migrants, but longer term, pressure on the land is likely to rise. But even here, farmers are not safe from the same problems that drove them from their homelands. We know that the heat is coming. The same heat that moved us from the Upper West region is now catching up with us here as well. Climate change is not one person or one country or one individual's making. It is all our making. We all have to put our hands on deck and try to, if not reverse the situation, try to manage it. Those people at the Upper West, 
they have to do serious, serious soil and water management. Since that is their home region, that's their origin, that is their land, we need to assist them to be able to manage it so that they could stay there. There's no place like home. No matter where you are, your home, where you have been born, your ancestral home, there's no other place like that place.